Good afternoon, and thanks for joining us. Today we're going to be talking to Stefan Defrager. Stefan plays professional soccer as a midfielder for the Wilmington Hammerheads and USL. His soccer background includes four years of college soccer with Dartmouth College from 2011 to 2014. Stefan captained his team at Guilford High School to the New Hampshire State Championship in 2010 and was named first team all state. He was also a recipient of the NSCAA Senior Excellence Award in 2010 and his 123 career goals ranks third all time in the state of New Hampshire. He has also played internationally in Europe and Argentina. In this session, Stefan will share his experience playing pro soccer and his soccer journey that has led to his current role. If you have questions for Stefan, you can text them to 813-501-2204. Again, that's 813-501-2204. And when you wanna text questions, be sure to text your name along with the questions so we know who the text is from. Thank you so much, and thanks for joining us today, uh, Stefan. The, the, the texts are already rolling in, but <laughs> before we get started with questions, I'll let you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you. All right. Hi, guys. I'm uh, Stefan here. Um, just to give you sort of a roundup, uh, I know Michelle sort of took, did the basis of, of my whole career and, and throughout my time playing soccer, but... Uh, like she said, I grew up in New Hampshire, uh, played high school soccer and club soccer since I was eight years old. Um, basically grew up playing throughout New, New Hampshire and, and ended up playing ODP for a long time. And through ODP, was able to play in Argentina, England, um, and other places like that, many states across America. And through that, I was recruited to play for Dartmouth. And after four years at Dartmouth, um, I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to continue to play. Um, and I signed my first contract. I actually graduated early in order to sign my first contract. And yeah, so had just had my last season, my first season this year as a rookie, and it went really well. And hoping next year goes just as well, and hopefully I'll, uh, I'll move up next year. So nice to meet you guys, and looking forward to your questions. Great. Thanks, Steph. Um, so the first question comes from George, and George says, I'm a huge soccer fan, and I've watched you play. You're an amazing player, and I can't wait to see you today on the live session. Um, I have one question, Messi or Ronaldo? <laughs> How's it going, George? Thank you. Um, you know, that's, I think that's one of the toughest questions uh, someone could ask. Uh, for me, I... I go back and forth. Um, I think a year ago I would have said Ronaldo, but after the last five, five, six months, you know, you feel like you got to give it to Messi. I know they're always battling and giving, giving each other credit back and forth. And uh, I think I tend to lean more towards Ronaldo just because I'm more of a Madrid fan over Barcelona. But you know, I think they're both one of the, they're both two of the best players we've ever seen play the game. And I think. I think we're just extremely fortunate to be able to to live in the in the time where we get to watch them play because it's uh it's pretty amazing uh, every time they get on the field. Awesome. Okay. Well, Brittany has a question for us, and Brittany asked, uh, "Did you play other sports to help improve your skills as a soccer player?" Yeah, I did actually. I played. I played actually many different other sports. Um, I grew up. Uh, I, I actually ski raced a lot when I was growing up, um, which uh, helped me a lot with my balance and sort of my, and my power aspect. I actually, uh, I actually did a little bit of, I, I danced for a little bit, which actually helped me uh, a lot with my footwork and flexibility, which was actually huge. I know a lot of NFL players actually do that as well, which is pretty cool. Um, other than that, I grew up playing baseball all the time, um, played a lot of baseball. I played tennis. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. Um, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think that, yeah, I think that's, uh, I think that's about it. But, uh, basically once I turned 15 or 16, when I was a sophomore in high school, I pretty much decided that soccer was what I wanted to do and basically played year round and, and would play, would play sports for fun on the side. But, um, 
that was that was basically when I decided that soccer was going to be my passion and what I wanted to do um, moving forward. So, yeah, I, I played a lot of sports growing up, but probably around 15, 16, I, I sort of had to choose and stick with one. Awesome. Um, thanks for the question, Brittany. Um, the next question is from Jonathan, and Jonathan asked, did your parents play soccer? Yeah, so my, my father actually um, is from Austria, which is, in, which is right below Germany in Europe. And um, sort of growing up, I followed him. He played soccer his whole life. Um, he moved over here when he was 20 years old and um, ended up meeting my mother here. And so basically my whole life growing up, he's the coach of our high school team uh, in Guilford and where I went to high school. And I grew up watching him play in different leagues in New Hampshire and New England and uh, sort of he watched soccer all the time. So I watched soccer all the time and sort of developed developed that passion through there. And uh, my mother is actually a, a, owns a dance studio and she's a she's a dancer. So um, that's actually where I, how I got into dancing a little bit when I was younger. But, but yeah, my my dad played a lot of soccer growing up. So I think that's that's where sort of my passion came from as well. Very cool. Um, so I have another text, and I, I don't know who this one is from. They didn't send their name, but their question was, um, what was, oh, my texts are coming in so fast, it's bumping <laughs> it down. Um, what, was, what was it like playing in, what was playing soccer like when you played in other countries? Um, it was actually, it was a lot different. So like I mentioned, I played in Argentina and England and Scotland, and I've also um, my freshman summer at Dartmouth, I, uh, I went to Germany and, and played the whole summer in Germany for a team. Um, and, you know, it sort of it was different at every place that I played at. Uh, in, in England, everyone's very so passionate about the sport that, um, you know, we, I was fortunate enough to play there during one of the World Cups. And we, I played in a Four Nations tournament. I got to represent the USA. And we actually played England, uh, the England uh, under 16s, I think it was. And um, we got to play them right after one of the U.S. World Cup games. And we ended up beating England for the first time, which was pretty cool. Um, but other than that, you know, Argentina was a lot different. It's a lot more the style of soccer is different. It's um, sort of the South Americans have their own. They're very, very, they're more, they're very passionate about the game. And they, it's more of a, it's, I don't know if you ever watched Brazil or, or the South American teams play. They have a much more different flair, like a Ronaldinho or, or some of the Brazil, Brazilian players and Argentinian players. Um, the past, but um, that was a lot different. The uh, I went to actually a, prof a professional game down there because I was there when I was sixteen, and the atmosphere was just was crazy. I mean, you have people, you have people screaming, you have flares going off. It's it's a pretty it's an experience for sure. Um, and then actually it was so that was sort of my younger experience playing over in different countries. And then when I was when I was twenty, when I got to play in Germany, it was a little bit different. I was playing for a professional team over there and. We had, I don't know, 40 to 50 people watching our practices every day, which was, which was something I wasn't used to. I'm used to going out there. You only got the coaches and the team. And it's sort of a closed atmosphere. But, you know, over there, everyone's, everyone's so focused on, on soccer. It's basically a religion for a lot of people over there and, and, and most countries around the world. Um, so playing in Germany was, was really cool because I got to experience sort of the professional environment um, as a young player, which is, which was, which is very beneficial for me because I got used to playing under pressure, even when you're, uh, even when you're just training, which was, which was pretty cool. Okay. Excellent. Um, sorry, I am, I get it. I have to catch up. I don't want to miss anybody's questions, um, here and they're coming in fast. So I would, I, um, I'm gonna try to catch up here with the with the messages. So um, I have a question from Kristen, and she's asking, "What are some of your duties?" And I think what she means by that is, "What do you do on a day to day basis to to as part of a team?" So uh, it definitely changes as you um, sort of as you, as you grow up and you go through playing at different different levels. But at the professional level, it's a lot different. It's um, sort of in college you have everything sort of organized for you. You have, um, it's, you're sort of expected to practice and, you know, if you have a bad practice, it's not necessarily going to hurt you as much. And it's more of, it's more of a fun atmosphere, I would say. And then the professional level, it's, it's sort of that the, your state of mind changes a little bit. So 
a lot of people like they're competing for their jobs they're competing for their this is this is what they do for their life this is how they're going to make a living so in the atmosphere and training is much more is uh it's much more high a little bit more high pressure and every day at practice you're trying to prove yourself so that you can play in a game and every, one one game could change your life so you never know who's watching you and and that's so you have to so sort of have to you have to you have to approach sort of every every day at practice and a general day for us would uh down in Wilmington is we'd wake up in the morning um we would practice would usually be at eight or nine o'clock in the morning uh usually last about two hours um after that every we you all go get lunch and then sort of have the afternoon off for the most part um we would lift um three times a week so basically that would be usually an afternoon session 45 minute lift um at the team facility um so that would usually be around two or three and then sort of you have the rest of rest of your day off um so to sort of do what you want uh which is pretty cool um wilmington is actually a great city it's right on right on the right on the beach so it's a pretty fun place to play because uh, on, on your off time you can you can hit the beach but uh yeah it's a uh, it's a it's definitely a lot different in the professional ranks just because sort of if if you want to do well it's it's up to you it's not it's not you you have no excuses so that's sort of uh sort of what i have to say i guess my our duties are okay great those are that's a great perspective to to give the progression of how it's changed uh in at different levels that was a great answer um i just want to say to i have some people who are sending their question over and over again and i've got a list of about 20 questions here so if you haven't heard your question i promise your question will get asked i promise it will okay um so i've got all the questions they are coming in um and i promise i will ask your question uh just as soon as as we get it. i'm just going right in order here um so the next a question is from from Nick um, and Nick says um, what is your favorite thing about playing soccer by the way go hammerheads <laughs> thanks a lot um, my favorite thing about playing soccer you know it's uh for me I've playing many different sports it's uh for me it's I think it's it's my favorite sport and obviously I think it's one of the best sports in the world um, I just think that you're sort of out there for 90 minutes. Um, the coaches can help you a little bit, but for the most part, you have to figure it out yourself with your with your teammates. Um, you could have, I think, with soccer, you can have the, one of the best players in the world, but if you don't have good players surrounding him, then uh, he's not going to be as effective as as you maybe an individual would be in other sports. Um, I mean, if you boil it down to one specific thing, I'd probably have to say scoring goals. Uh, the feeling of, of putting the ball in the back of the net in a big game, uh, it's something that once you experience, I think you're addicted to it for life. Um, I know, I mean, some of my favorite goals I'll, I'll never forget. It's sort of burned in your memory, even even from high school, which is, uh, what, now five, six years ago. Um, I remember specific goals that I used to score all the time. Uh, and, you know, it's... Once that once that ball goes in the back of the net in a big game, like I said in a championship game or or a big game late in the game when you need to tie or win the game, uh, that feeling you get when you score when you score a goal is is I've I've had a tough time matching that feeling. So you know I think that has to probably be my favorite thing. Very cool, excellent. Um, so the next question is from Robert. And Robert said, I'm a huge fan of yours and have followed your career. My question is, how much have your friends and family impacted your career and your success? So that's a great question, Robert. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for following me. Um, you know, they've been, I can't even, I can't even put into words how much they've, they've helped me achieve what I could achieve. I mean, my family specifically, um, once I turned 12, my practices were an hour and a half away, three times a week. And, um, you know, uh, like you, coming from a, a sort of small town in New Hampshire, there's not a lot of resources around. And sort of my dad, in order for, to help me pursue uh, what I wanted to do with soccer, he would, he would help coach teams. He would help. I mean, he used to drive, like I said, he used to drive an hour and a half, three times a week, plus games on the weekends. And, you know, that obviously put a strain on – my mom and my sister too and they've all they've always helped me pursue whatever i wanted to do whether it was driving me places or 
maybe not going to something else so they could come to a game and driving to a game. Um, it's that's been huge. And I, my family, I I don't think I definitely could not be where I am without them because once you get to a certain point, you need, you need help. You can't do it on your own. And, uh, you know, even someone with a great talent, a great talent might not make their true potential without, without someone to help them along their way. And I mean, also my friends growing up, I played with some of, some amazing some amazing players and some of them chose not to pursue soccer at the next level which is which is which is totally fine um but i know training against them every day and playing with them every day was something that helped me just not only become a better soccer player but a better person and i have friends that i played with when i was 12 years old that still sort of will send me a text after one of my games in wilmington and basically say wow i can't believe you made it to the next level I uh, can't believe you made it this far. Like, you, like they'll basically talk about how how proud they are, and that you know that 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 gives you that makes you believe in yourself uh, more than anything. And um, I have, like I said, friends that I'll keep keep in contact for the rest of my life. That I played soccer when I was 13, 14 years old. So it's a uh, you, you can't you can't do it on your own. And I'm just I'm extremely blessed to have um, sort of the the connections and the and the help that I've had along the way to where I am now. Very good. Excellent. Um, so the next question is from Michael. And Michael asks, how many days a week do you practice and for how long do you practice each day? So in the course of a season, um, sort of, we usually would practice five days a week with um, – with a game on Saturday usually. So it would be five days a week. Um, practice would be around two hours a day. And then maybe two or three times a week, like I said, we would have uh, a lift, which would be about 45 minutes to an hour. And then sort of on Thursday or Friday, we might have an afternoon session where we go out and it's sort of no contact, just sort of get getting touches on the ball, doing some finishing drills, some shooting drills. Um, just sort of some shaping stuff just for the for the game on the weekend and just to stay stay sharp um, but then again you know it, it varies from week to week if you have a midweek game you might not practice as much you might have Monday off practice Tuesday game Wednesday and then off Thursday um, one of the one of the big things that have actually come out recently that um, being being at a school that I was which was which was awesome I got to research a lot of this stuff and they've they've come out and basically said that uh, recovery is actually can be more beneficial than overtraining. So um, th that's some of the things that our coaches have sort of recognized and realized that, you know, if, if the team's feeling a little, a little sore or a little uh, fatigued, it might be better to, to take a couple hours of rest that rather than push it in practice. But um, yeah, I sort of, that's probably it, how it is during the, during the season. And then the off season, it's sort of, sort of a little bit more intense. Um, because in season you can't really do a lot of fitness. You're not really you can't really run as much. You can't really. It's more you want time in the ball and you want time to to work out relationships within the team. But in the off season, like right now, for example, I'm in the off season. I I took a little bit of time off, but I've started my training program up again. And I basically will in the morning go for a run, maybe two or three miles, and then go lift. And then in the afternoon, I've actually been lucky enough to help. Um, the, my Dartmouth team out um, as they this year coming back as a player coach. So I've been able to help coach and train them a little bit and tra jump into training with them, which is which has actually helped me a lot. So off season is more like a two a day type of workout. Um, as you get more towards the season and preseason, you want to sort of intensify that and, and do a little bit more. But uh, it sort of it sort of varies. But that probably will give you a sense of uh, for the most part what the schedule is like. Awesome. It sounds busy. Yeah. <laughs> never stop. You never um, stop. <laughs> so uh, um, this is a question that's common from a lot of students. The uh, Luna has asked it as well as Vanessa, and I just saw another one come in asking the same same question. Um, and they're curious: How do you think that your job uh, in, impacts the community that you play in and work in? Yeah, so that's actually one of the things about well being in a small community like community like Wilmington, which I actually really enjoy. Um, so we're the only professional team basically in, around anywhere close to Wilmington. So we get a lot of fans and a lot of people that come out to our games, and 
a lot of people will recognize us, you know, when we're, when we're out and out and about and walking around the town. And, um, one of the things that we do is we do a lot of stuff working with the y, local YMCAs and we do a lot of stuff basically offering camps for the kids. And one of the things that I th think that's really cool is a lot of professional students don't have to do this, but we'll, one of the things that we do is we get to, uh, we all during every camp day, we'll have a group of four or five guys out there, um, sort of helping out the coaches and just sort of playing with the kids a little bit. And, uh, some of our biggest fans, you know, we usually we get like 6,000 or more fans at games and probably a third of them are, are kids. So, um, it's, it's been, it's been really fun to, to impact kids and sort of see a kid, uh, ask for your autograph after every game. So that part of it's pretty cool. And, uh, I just, I just hope they see, um, they see that even though we are like professional athletes and we are playing soccer for a living, that, uh, it's not the only thing going on in our lives and it's not, it's not the end of the world. So, um, for, for that, I think that's, I think it's pretty cool cause we get to work with kids, kids mostly. Cause I, I mean, I always love working with kids. So something that I did at Dartmouth is something I did before Dartmouth. So to do it at the next level, professional level has, has been pretty cool. Excellent. Um, the next question is from AJ and AJ's question is in a dream scenario, would you rather play in the MLS, the BPL, or La Liga? <laughs> uh, I'd probably have to say it's a tough one for me because you know I'd love to play. I'd love to play at home in America, um, just because all my family's here, all my friends are here, um, and that's essentially what I'm striving to do. Playing, playing with the Hammerheads now is that in the next couple of years to move up to the MLS, but. A dream scenario, you gotta you gotta say the Premier League for me, just because in the BPL, just because uh, there's so much history in that league, and there's so much uh, there's so many great players that have played in that league. Um, uh, and for me, I've been to a few games over there, and it's uh, there's there's the atmosphere is pretty amazing. So I'd probably have to say the the Premier League over everything else. <laughs> Okay, Ariel has a question, and Ariel asks, if you didn't see your dad play soccer and your passion for did not grow for your sport, what do you think you would be doing? That's a hard question. <laughs> that, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a very hard question. Um, that's, that's really tough because for me, I mean, I, I feel like – for me, I, I was such a part of my life. I can't even remember a time where it wasn't a part of my life. But um, just, I guess, from what I like, I've done through school and, and through Dartmouth and gotten my degree. I, my, I got my degree in economics and sociology. So uh, I probably would think I'd probably like to do something in, in the business world, uh, whether that be uh, marketing, consulting, or, or finance. Um, and also, skiing has also been a big part of my life, too. So I feel like where I'm from, I grew up in New Hampshire, all my friends skied. It was sort of what we did in the winter. We loved skiing all the time. And uh, so I'd, I'd, probably, I'd probably think I'd eventually do something with a sport just because uh, I, I just love competing and I love, I love playing. I think, it's, I think it's, I have such a good time every time I play any sport. So for me, whether, or not it, whether, whether it was soccer or another sport, um, I'd probably say I'd be involved in some sort of thing athletically, uh, if not that. What I'm hoping to do after uh, I play soccer is either coach or go into the business world. So, uh, yeah, those are probably my the best answers I could give. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. You've given some thought to that, I can tell. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, for <laughs> for a while, you know, it's it's you always got to be. That's one of the, that's one of my biggest things I would say is that uh, you know it's such a small percentage of of people that actually make it to the next level and it. it you could be a very good player and just happen to get a bad injury or I've had friends who've had been amazing players and just had a bad injury and sort of never been the same. And, uh, to have a backup, to get a college degree and have a backup for me, um, is, is awesome because I know that even some guys on my team that basically played soccer, professional soccer since they've been 18 and they're sort of gearing towards the end of their careers and they're not totally sure what they want to do yet. And, uh, for me, which, uh, I'm very fortunate to have this, but I, I could play soccer for, four or five years, you know, and then if I decide that's it for me, I can use my degree and go into, go into business or, or do what I want to do, um, in the business world. So for, for me, I've, I'm very fortunate to have that, but that's something that I really, I really wanted to graduate before I left, left school. Very good. Excellent. Um, this is another question from, 
Earl, but I think it might be a different Earl because it's a different phone number. So another Earl. Um, other than entertainment, what role do you think your career plays on society? I think you answered that a little bit with the um, the impact that you have on being able to mentor kids playing soccer. Um, is there anything else you want to add to that? Um, for me, I think it's it's my career as well as just sports in general. I think that um, you know sometimes the world can be tough and sometimes, you know, realities can be, can be harsh. Um, and I think that sports, professional sports gives, gives society uh, a break from that and maybe can, can sort of uh, get involved in something that's bigger than them. And that's something they can't really control. Mm -hmm. uh, and that uh, can bring them happiness for even if it's a short, 90 minutes or if it's throughout a whole season or if it's if you're a lifetime fan I think that uh, I think that sports I think that sports promotes sort of a not a distraction but it sort of promotes promotes a good thing promotes promotes uh, promotes something people can get behind so, something people can get behind together and and bring uh, sort of preach unity and togetherness and everything like that and just me specifically I mean it's I think any professional athlete who gets to the point where, where they're sort of famous enough, or people respect them enough to where they can do something positive, even through like through charities and through different aspects like that, I think that once you gain the power that you gain, I think you can use it. You can you can use it for good, and you can use it for um, as a role model for someone. You can for a group of people, for a lot of people as a professional athlete, you can you can use that. I guess power for for good for for good things. So I think that's what I would like to try to do with my career. I think that's a, a good uh, a good goal. Um, George, uh, our our first question asked for George has another question okay. for you. Uh, he actually has two more questions. Okay. So um, and they're sort of related. So I'm going to ask them both to you. So. Um, he says, what team is your dream team to play on? For example, uh, Munich, Madrid, Manchester United. And then he says, I want to play. My dream is to play for Spain or Real Madrid. Mm -hmm. What are some advice you could give me? So what's your dream team? And then what, are, what advice would you give a, a kid who, who has dreams of playing? Uh, yeah, I mean, so I sort of – I'm – first most a, a, a soccer fan in general but I have to say my team even though it pains me to say it right now but my team is uh Chelsea uh we had a great year last year not so good this year but um I have to say Chelsea um it's funny actually one of my really good friends who I graduated Dartmouth with is uh playing with the Red Bulls two team in the USL so I got to play him four times and during last season they the Red Bulls uh scrimmaged Chelsea and he actually got to play against them so I was extremely jealous, jealous of him for that, but, <laughs> but uh, I'd probably say Chelsea. And and as for advice, you know, it's like I said, it's 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 a tough road to make it to make it to uh, to the professional ranks in general, and, and to Real Madrid is you know it's 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 an absolutely a dream, and I I think I'm, I would never discount anyone anyone's dream to do whatever they want because I mean for me when I was ten or eleven years old, I had coaches you know saying that. No, I was from New Hampshire. You never make it and stuff like that. So um, I was lucky enough, again, to have a family to back me up and give me confidence. But, uh, you know, what I would say, I would just keep going, you know, keep practicing, don't give up. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes, goes on behind the scenes that training-wise and stuff that you don't, you don't see and you, you don't get to see. Um, there's a lot of things that I did that, that I trained by myself for months on end by myself without anyone to help me. And, uh, if that's what it takes to get to the next level, that's what it takes. You know, some people are extremely gifted and may not have to work as hard to gain, to get to their goals. But my, my attitude has always been, you know, if it doesn't hurt and you can do more, uh, do it. So that's sort of what I've, <laughs> what I've, uh, adapted <laughs> for my, my ideals, I guess. It's good advice. Work hard, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so the next question is from Haley, and she asks, what special role do you play? I think what she means by that maybe is on your team, what, what role do you have on your team? Um, so I am 
this year I played a lot of positions. I played, uh, I was a midfielder. Um, I was an outside midfielder, and I actually played a little bit of uh, outside back, which is uh, defense. And um, basically what I had to do is just sort of score goals and put the ball in the box. And what, one of the things I'm pretty good at, I guess, is is running. So <laughs> I guess my job was to to win everything and uh, just keep the ball moving for me, probably. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Um, and, and a related question, Brianna asks, uh, Brianna says that she played soccer her first three years of high school and in her younger years. Her coach usually had her as a midfielder, defender, and sometimes a forward. Her mm -hmm. question is, what position do you usually play, which you just answered, but she also asks, what, which do you prefer? What is your, what is your favorite position? position uh, my favorite position is probably uh, offensive center mid, just because you get to touch the ball a lot and you're in the position to score a lot of goals. Uh, but I mean, I, I just love playing the game in general. So I, um, I sort of don't mind where I, where I play as long as I'm on the field, but definitely I'd have to say like an offensive center mid position. Very good. Um, okay, this question is from Kirsten, and Kirsten asks, um, did you ever think you would be where you are now, and what was your biggest motivating force? Um, that's, that's, that's a tough question, you know, I, I mean, I always dreamed of playing soccer, but I never really, you know, you never really know what it takes to get here until you actually do it, um. But, I mean, there were times where, you know, I had a rough year. I had a few rough games growing up where you would think, oh, maybe I'm not good enough and maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not going to make it. But uh, I just sort of stayed at it and just really wanted, really, this is my dream and I wanted to do it. And I was fortunate enough to get the opportunity to do it. And uh, I think that's probably, <laughs> that's probably the best answer I could give. I think it's just there are going to be times where you don't play as well and you feel, you don't feel like you can do it, but, some, you know, you can. So definitely true. Definitely yeah. true. Um, Nicholas wants to know, this is, uh, this might be a little tricky to answer, but, um, okay. because I, I, I don't know if you can quantify it for us, but mm -hmm. Nicholas wants to know how hard did you work to achieve your goal of playing professional soccer? <laughs> uh, very hard. Uh, mm -hmm. very, very hard. You know, uh, I basically was looked for every opportunity to train, every opportunity to get better physically and on the ball. Um, I even got to a point where uh, I actually, my, I really, I saw a lot of guys training with the uh, parachutes behind their back and sort of get faster. And um, at that point, when I was like 15 or 16, you know, 14, you know, it was pretty expensive to get one of those. So um, I actually just took a, like a two by four and put it attached it to a weight belt and would do sprints with that. So if that gives you any idea of, uh, of the hard work it takes. You know, sometimes you got to do. You were industrious. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes you got to do uh, whatever it takes and I wanted to get faster and that's <laughs> what I had to do. So I did it. And, uh, you know, there were some days where I'd get home from school and it was the last thing I wanted to do was go out and run in the cold, but I would do it and it, definitely paid off in the end you know it, it's you never know you never know if, if it's going to work out but uh i think you always have to put yourself in the best position to do so so that's what i try to do <laughs> good that's a good that's a good story i don't think i've heard that yeah. one before yeah that's, uh, <laughs> i don't tell that i don't tell that one very often but you heard it here like first <laughs> yeah i felt like it per pertained to that question so. <laughs> um so okay jonah asked a question um and there's another question also that I saw come up that is later <laughs> in the list. Um, so Joe, and I think it was uh, Ariana or Adriana, um, but Jonah asks, have you had any mishaps? I'm not sure if he means like injuries or I'm not sure exactly what he means by that, but I guess answer it however you think uh, makes yeah, sense. Yeah, so I mean, I've gone through many mishaps. Um, there were times, there were, I had my, junior of high school right as I was starting to get recruited I tore all the ligaments in my ankle and was out for basically six months and when I got back I was had to tape my ankle for about almost another six months so uh, that was pretty tough for me in the spot that I was in um, and I was lucky enough to be healthy after that but 
that really sort of put me a little bit behind the recruiting process. And then just in general playing wise, you know, I've had coaches that one year, uh, wouldn't, didn't ex exactly like the way I was playing and didn't wanted to have the team go in another direction. So I wasn't getting as much playing time. And, um, even this year for, for Wilmington, we played a lot in the beginning and then the team was struggling. So our coach decided to rely on the veterans, um, for a few games and, you know, you just got to stay patient and wait for your next opportunity because um, a lot of time those coaching decisions aren't uh, in your control. And you sort of, I stayed with it and then ended up playing the last 13 games, uh, basically the whole game for all of them. So uh, you got to stay patient. It's going to be frustrating at times um, to anyone out there who's actually who's trying to play a sport at any level. Um, you just sort of have to be patient and, and hope when you get the chance that you can uh, you can prove yourself. Good advice. Very good advice. I think that applies to uh, to a lot to, of things. To yeah. A lot of things. Not not, not just the sports. opportunities. Yes. Yeah. Um. So Ryan, Ryan has a bunch of questions. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I think actually he asked one earlier. Uh. <laughs> but he, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. They're a little bit different. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask his questions. Uh. They're all good questions. So, mm -hmm. um. He says, um. Congratulations at making it this far. I'd love to play soccer at your level. Where do you see your soccer career in the next few years? You know, that's something <laughs> I would I would love the answer to, but uh, you know, what I would like to do is hopefully I'll play one more year uh, in this league and then get a chance to either play in the MLS or um, I would love to play either in Austria or Germany because that's where uh, I still have family, a lot of family over there. Um, and, uh, so yes, yeah, so I think I would love to basically move up. It's, it's been good playing in this league just because I get a lot of playing time and a lot of, a lot of kids my age who get, even get drafted to the MLS play in this league. So it's a good way to get seen and get, uh, get experience on the ball and, and being a professional before you get, before you get moved up. So that's probably where I would hope to see my career go. Excellent. Um, uh, so he has another question. This is actually a good question. Um, I'm sure a lot of kids who are thinking about, uh, you know, wanting to be a part of professional sports might have the same question. So his, Ryan's other question is, what was the tryout process like to become a part of the Hammerheads? Okay, so, so I was lucky enough that my assistant coach at Dartmouth played uh, professional soccer for a long time. He played for um, FC Dallas and the MLS for a long time and then played a couple of years in the USL before finishing, um, before retiring. And he actually had a fair amount of connections uh, for me, and he set me up. Originally, I went to uh, a combine, which is like there's the MLS combine, and then there's the combine that the – Basically, if you're in the top 40 in the country, you would go to the MLS Combine. But if not, you'd go to the next one. And I went to that one, uh, had a good showing. And then uh, my coach from Dartmouth reached out to this to the Wilmington coach. And I went down for the open tryout, which anyone can try out for. Anyone, they sort of invite everyone out. Um, so you have to pay the trial fee. Um, I was lucky enough to where they had seen me play enough. And I had enough video to where they sort of invited me down for free, which was, which was nice. And then... After the first couple of days of tryouts, they invited me to preseason. Um, I went to preseason, and then after four or five days, they brought me into the office and basically presented me with the contract. And basically, there were talks back and forth about various things in the contract, but it ended up I ended up signing it a week later. So, sort of how the the process I went through to to sign my first contract. Probably a similar process for most. I mean, unless yeah. unless you're one of the you know unless. Uh it's probably a similar process for most, uh, most people I, w I would imagine. So that's yeah, a, good, yeah. a good general. Yeah, actually the, the first pick in the MLS draft, uh, sort of ended up playing for the Red Bulls two team, which I, we, we played against four times. So, um, I actually knew him pretty well. So it was, that was, that was fun too. Very cool. Um, Oh, Ryan, Ryan just said he's sorry about the number of questions. I told <laughs> totally don't, you don't need to apologize, Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> the questions are all excellent. So I'm so glad you asked all the questions. I just wanted to make sure they all got answered. Um, and then his last question, and then we'll move on to the next student. His last question is, uh, who was your inspiration growing up playing soccer? Um, oh, besides probably my dad growing up, uh, probably my favorite professional player was, uh, was Ronaldo, but we call him Fat Ronaldo. Um, 
number nine for Brazil. He was he was always someone that I uh, was always my favorite player growing up, and that's why to till this day nine is still my favorite number that I will always try to get <laughs> with every so, team. So not the Ronaldo today, but the Ronaldo. No, no back the, in the, the day. Ronaldo. Yeah, back in the day. Um, also, I really I grew up watching David Beckham a lot uh, mm -hmm. in his younger years, um, and then uh, probably have to say Didier Drogba was probably my next big player also being a Chelsea fan. So that was, uh, that was big for me. I li liked watching him, him play, which was cool. So, so I'd probably look up to, and you know, and, and you always have role models and other, another sort of aspects. One of, one of uh, role models just in, in ath athletics in general, uh, there was a, a person who went to my high school who was on the Olympic uh, cross country ski teams. Thanks Alex Howe. And he, uh, he sort of, he, he trained harder than anyone I've ever met. And sort of, he, he helped me develop my habits in high school, which were, which is good because that's always a tough time for, for every kid. So, uh, for him, having him as a role model was, was, role model was, was good too. Very good. It's always good to have, uh, those important people out there. Yeah, absolutely. So this student doesn't want to say their name. Okay. Um, but their question is, um, that, um, this student has a brother who says uh, every time he tells his brother that he wants to play soccer, he says that he'll never he'll never make it. Um, so he wanted to know what what insight could you give him on how you dealt with people like that, and if you have any ideas of how to how to put um, present your skills in the best way. Yeah, so uh, like I said before, there was actually a coach that uh, from another state through ODP that when I was 12 years old basically told me that uh, a New Hampshire kid would ever make it. Uh, so hearing that as a 12-year-old was kind of shocking. But uh, to, for my advice, it's just as long as you love the game, just keep playing. Um, keep playing and keep trying to do your best every day. Uh, I I don't think I would ever tell someone that, you know, it's it's – it's always tough when it's a sibling or something like that, but uh, you really just, if you love the game, just keep playing. And, and, you know, if you get the opportunity to make it to the next level or, or make it to the college level or make it to club level and get the opportunity, just try to try to make the most of it. And if, as long as you love the game and keep playing, then um, yeah, hopefully it'll happen for you. Good advice. Um, so Vanessa had a question, but we actually asked it earlier, and I think I mentioned that Vanessa had asked the question. She was asking also about the, the community, the role in the community. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But I think we answered that one already. Um, this is Kristen, and Kristen um, asks, what are your, uh, what is your favorite, um, hold on, okay, what is your favorite sport other than soccer? Um, I'd probably have to say skiing. Uh, that's to do yourself. What about to like to do be myself. a sport, to do a be a, a fan of fan of? I'd probably it's probably have to say hockey. Um, I'm a big fan of a uh, big fan of hockey. I think it's 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 fast. I I think it's it's a lot, it's a lot of skill. It's a lot of sort of everything that I think it's extremely exciting. So I'd probably have to say probably have to say ice hockey would be my the the so the sport besides soccer that I enjoy watching the most most. Very good. Um, so Emily was asking also what your favorite position to play on the field is, but I think we talked about that one already. So thanks for that question, Emily. Um, Jasmine was asking again about what role you play. Uh, that was answered. Thank you, Jasmine. Um, what do you like most about your career, asked Sierra. Uh, I probably think what, what I like most is just, getting to do something that I love doing um, to, to make it up to the level where they're sort of paying me to, to play a sport and have fun, uh, play soccer and have fun is, uh, it's a great feeling and it's, it's extremely fun to do. Um, like I said, it's, it's a lot of hard work and <laughs> it is a grind, but uh, if you love, if you love doing it, if through anything, whether it's um, any other job you do, it's, I'm just like, I'm lucky enough to, to do something that I love doing and, and uh, for ever, for how long it lasts, uh, I'm gonna enjoy it a lot. So <laughs> that probably would be 
be my answer to that just because it's I love doing it and I they, they pay me to do it so <laughs> never never <laughs> a bad that, thing right when you <laughs> no do way. something you love I mean how can you beat that yeah um so Peyton asks what special do you, what special things do you bring to your team or do you think there's something unique that you bring to your team um it's tough, you know, playing wise, uh, every player is their own individual and has is, is good at different things. And that's what the tricky part is, is putting a team together um, with 11 individuals that are good at doing their own thing. Um, but personally, me, like, like I said before, sort of, as you go up to the next level, your, your, role, tra- your role changes every sort of every time you, you move up. And for me, uh, I probably bring, like I said, a lot of like a lot of fitness. Um, I uh, keep the ball well. Uh, if I can, I try to score as many goals as I can. Um, try to put the ball in the box uh, to get assists to help the team win, and sort of really anything, whether it's defending, anything on the field, I, I try to bring whatever I can to help us win. Excellent. Um, I have a question here, but I don't know who it's from because they did not include their name. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Uh, it was about what kind of training you did and what, what things you did on the field. So um, I think both of those you've answered. So we'll move on to the next question. Uh, these are great questions. Thanks, everybody, for sending in your questions. Um, Taylor asks, what are some of your responsibilities as a soccer player? So I think maybe she means, like, besides training, um, do you have any other, you know, responsibilities for the team or – um, I mean, as a rookie, I had to, you know, pick up the balls, sort of pump up the balls, bring the, the gear to practice, clean up after practice. Uh, but so I think sort of every rookie goes through that. Uh, other than that, um, basically my primary job is to stay in shape. So sort of what I <laughs> what I've been doing. Very good. So there are some there are some uh, less glamorous parts of the job too. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> can't, can't complain though. You know. Yes. Yes. Um, so this is a good question. Alexa asks, um, what is your favorite women's soccer team? Uh, that's, that's a tough one. Um, I mean, I mean, you got to go with the women's national team, uh, for the U S just because, uh, I mean, they just won the world cup and, and, uh, they're extremely fun to watch. So probably to say them, you know, uh, my cousin actually plays for Maryland girls, women's soccer team. So, mm-hmm support them. So I'd probably say those two. Yes. Shout out to Maddie. Yeah. Shout out to Maddie. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, all right. This is from Adriana. Uh, she says, go, go hammerheads. Your team rocks. Um, hold on. There's a bunch of text, So I'm trying to see what, um, so she asks three questions um uh well this first one i think you've answered already why did why did you want to be a soccer player i think you talked about that a little bit so i'll ask you the other two um one is how many goals have you made as a professional and um how many miles do you practice how many miles do you run in training um I've scored two goals so far as a professional, um, and this is my first year, so uh, I actually scored two in the same game, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then in a game, I usually run anywhere from eight to ten miles in a game, sometimes more. Um, and out of, out of that, I've always enjoyed running long distance in general, so I'll try to go for two or three miles a day when I'm in full training. Um, and then... Uh, I can go on longer runs. Sometimes I do I'll do between like five and eight. Um, that'll usually be a slower type of run. Uh, but yeah, so probably between anywhere from one mile to eight miles during during practice or training. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> eight miles is like a third of a marathon. Jeepers, <laughs> creepers. <laughs> um, good questions, Adriana. And yeah, remember that Stefan is, he had his rookie le- rookie year last year. So pretty, pretty impressive to score uh, two, two goals in your rookie year in the same game, no less. Yeah. 
Um, so, okay, uh, Brandon asks, um, okay, so he, Brandon says, as an athlete myself, I'm always wondering what to eat and drink so that I stay in, in, in shape, especially since I play basketball, which is similar to soccer in that you need a lot of endurance. Yep. Do you have any suggestions for what to eat and drink to stay in shape during the season or even what to eat before a game? So before a game specifically, uh, through and through this we, we did at Dartmouth as well as uh, as well as professionally. Um, usually before a game, you don't really eat anything heavy. We usually eat like grilled chicken and rice, and then vegetables or grilled chicken, pasta, vegetables, something like that. That would be sort of before a game. Um, for me, I try to stay away from in season. I try to stay away from like like greasy stuff like like french fries or fast food or burgers or something like that like wheat leading up to a game or something like that um try to eat a lot of a lot of healthy stuff a lot of vegetables a lot of fruit um like basically protein that protein that is is good and, and will help will give you energy not just sort of like burgers or with a lot of grease and stuff like that so try to eat as healthy as possible and and it, it, there's no question that definitely helps. Uh, you feel more energetic. You feel just sort of better when you're not eating that kind of stuff. And I always say we always have a cheat day sort of after the day after a game, especially when you've, when you've lost a few pounds. Um, it's never a bad thing to have a burger or something then because for at least for me, that's how, how I always tried to do it um, just to gain the weight back and get the calories in you. Good deal. Um, Carmen asks a question and it kind of is related to something we've already answered. So I think I'm going to give a shout out to Carmen, but, uh, move on to the next question. But Carmen was asking again about like your, your long-term career goals. And I think mm -hmm. you've sort of answered that both about soccer and other opportunities. Yeah. So, um, so I'm going to go on to the next question, but thanks Carmen for that question. Um, so this, um, this is a parent who did not give a name, um, but this uh, person says, I'm a parent. Um, what can I do to help my son be successful in soccer, and how can I help him prepare for college scouts? So what I would suggest, the one thing, I mean, I've, I've helped recruits. I sort of try to get into college and, and players that have tried to play in college. And um, I, what I would say is, you know, you have to be you have to be realistic about about where you want to play. You have to be re realistic about the level you want to play at. Um, you always I would definitely reach for as far as you can. But what I did is you sort of pick a couple colleges that you're interested in playing in, and then um, sort of go to their camps, uh, go to camps where the scouts will be at. Um, sort of do sort of that sort of thing, um, and then um, try to put yourself in the best sort of position to do that. Uh, trying to think of other stuff that I did, you know, um, I played in the, the academy system and that prepared me a lot because the level, the level of that was very comparable to college. Um, so that helped me a lot. Uh, the other thing, um, for, for a parent, I mean, it, for me, it really sort of has to come from the, the player, obviously. And if, if they're willing and they're committed, then you definitely can, uh, you definitely can, can go for it. Um, so yeah, I, that's what I suggest. I'd say to get into college and sort of get to the next level, go to camps, uh, listen to coaches, sort of, sort of take all the information in and, and use what you can to, to help your, your son get to the next level. Excellent. Very good. Good advice. Um, so another question from Ryan. Um, it's a good one. I think you'll enjoy answering this one. Um, can you describe the best goal you've ever scored? I'm sure you have one in your mind. I think it can be from any point in your, uh, your career. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> probably the best goal I ever scored was, uh, against Harvard last year. Um, I got the ball probably about 30 yards out and put it, uh, in the top left corner. It was probably, I still sort of laugh sometimes when I watch the video because it's sort of, <laughs> sort of can't believe that that happened, but uh, that would probably be my favorite goal that I've scored, probably the best goal that I've scored for sure. It also was, was big for us because at that point we were um, on the way to winning an Ivy League championship and um, Harvard was a tough opponent and something we had to, we had to get points off of. So it helped us, it helped us do that. Very good. Um, okay, this is another one. Uh, this is someone who didn't send their name, but they asked um, – What's your favorite food, and what cleats do you wear? 
Uh, so I wear, right now I wear Vapors, uh, Nike Vapors, um, which I love them. I've worn them for probably about a year now. Uh, probably will stay with them for a while. Um, as are for my favorite meal, um, being my family's from Austria, uh, I really love the Wiener Schnitzel. It's probably <laughs> an odd, an odd choice for favorite food, but I actually found a restaurant in Wilmington that uh, serves German food, so I usually go there once a week. <laughs> but that's wow. definitely probably my favorite, favorite <laughs> kind of food. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Sounds yummy. Yeah. Um. So uh, Luna asks. Um, do you use any special technology to train for soccer? So recently they've come out with sort of uh, watches, smart watches, and, and type of stuff you can put in your cleats that tracks how much you run and how much you will basically run during practice and, and how much that takes out of you and stuff like that. But for the most part, I've essentially just used or I weigh in, bef weigh in before practice, weigh in with after just so you know how much you need to gain back and how much fluid you've lost. Um, so you can maintain your weight throughout a season because that's sometimes a tough thing to do. Um, but that's probably probably one of the few things. I mean, obviously, I have apps on my phone that, that helps me when I run to figure out how long I run for how many miles and, and the pace and everything like that. But for the most part, I sort of grew up without all that stuff, so I got used to not using anything. <laughs> <laughs> you just keep it all up here in your head. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Haley... Haley asks, uh, do you have any time off and how much? Uh, I think she maybe talk a, talk a little bit about what is, what is it on season versus off season amount of time, months in the year. So the USL is actually a smaller, se uh, shorter season than uh, like by, by a month and a half probably from the, the MLS. And uh, so basically we start in mid-February and we end in October. So I have three months really to – take off and usually we'll take a couple weeks off and then start training again. Um, I was lucky enough to get a position working for Dartmouth athletic department while well, in the off season. So I can help the team here and, and keep myself in training, which has been, which has been fun. So, uh, yeah, so it's, it's three months, which is actually a long time, but uh, it's fun to be able to do something different. So you're excited when you get to go back. Very cool. And still related to soccer, even though it's different. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> not, to not totally taken Not totally break. different. Um, so Aiden asked, how long have you been playing soccer professionally? So, so he, he, Stefan, I'll, we talked about that, you, that you're in your – this last year was your rookie year. So you'll be going into year two this year. Um, when does your season start? When does the new season start? So um, I report for preseason uh, February 15th. Uh -huh. And then uh, first game is going to be in the middle of March. So, uh, so we start up then, and hopefully, I'm, hopefully, I'll get training before that. But that's sort of where I'm, uh -huh. I'm uh, where where I'm confirmed going right now. So, okay. cool. Um, and then, how Adriana asks, how long can you juggle the ball without it touching the ground? <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> I actually, I have a little bit of a little bit of ADD, so I can't. I I can juggle for probably a while, but I'm more. I have more fun doing tricks and uh, doing different uh, sort of skills like that more than just keeping it up in the air. <laughs> but so I, I actually have never really tried to go as long as I could, but it, I would hope it would be a long time. <laughs> what do you mean by tricks? Like kick it up over uh, your head? Like or sort of, yeah, like like have it saw on your back, sort of do uh different things with on your feet sort of like uh rotations around the ball and stuff like different so different like sort of juggling tricks but. gotcha 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 okay um so luna asked a question and and um this is kind of not related to soccer but um maybe you have one um what is your favorite book oh wow okay um sort of on a different wavelength uh, wow, my favorite book I actually, so I actually read a fair amount. Um, oh, favorite book. I've got to reach deep for that one. Reach deep. Um, <laughs> I yeah. caught you off guard with that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was thinking about that one. Uh, favorite book, you it know. It can even be a favorite book from when you were a kid. It doesn't yeah. have to be your current favorite book. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of, there's one I read. Uh, 
it's fun. It's, it's going to be a little where we're a little alternative, but um, I really liked. I had sort of two favorite books. Probably one of my favorite books was uh, David Beckham's autobiography, which was actually really cool. Mm -hmm. um, I learned a lot from him. Sort of, he discussed growing up as a soccer player as a kid and how he got found by Manchester United and sort of all the all all he went through. Um, but other than that, uh, I really like the book. It's called A Long Walk. Um, it's about it's about um, this this guy who in World War II uh, was sent up to was captured and sent up to um, Russia and had basically escaped and walked all the way from Northern Russia all the way to uh, India on foot. So I thought it, it's a very, very amazing story. And I, I'm actually a big fan of documentaries and watching documentaries. So the big fan of, of books that are, that are true stories. So Excellent. Well, that does. It sounds like the good story of perseverance. Yeah. Um, okay, so I, oopsies, the one more question. Um, so I'm going to end with that one. So I would, uh, one, one question came in, are you in a locker room right now? <laughs> I am. <laughs> Actually, uh, we have, uh, I'm about to go, to go start training uh, in the next half an hour. Um, so I came down here beforehand to, to get all ready and stuff, everything. So yeah, I'm actually in Dartmouth's locker room right now. Very good. Yeah. Someone had a keen eye on that one. <laughs> yeah. um, and then the, the, the last question, um, oops, let's see, the last question is from Kirsten, and this is going to be our last question, because we know you have to go, um, yeah. is if someone has a dream, but it seems too unrealistic, what would you say to them? Uh, I mean, it's a pretty loaded question, but, you know, I mean, I had... I dreamt of playing soccer since I was a little kid and there were many people who told me I couldn't do it. Uh, so you know, obviously there were a lot of things I went into and I was very fortunate to get the breaks that I did and, and, and uh, sort of had the support I, I had on the way to doing it. But uh, I sort of, I never really stopped believing that that's what I really wanted to do. So, I mean, I know it's sort of a cliche thing to say, but uh, I would say, you know, never give up because if you really want to do something, um, I believe that you you can put everything you can into that and you can do it. Um, I know there are a lot of things that have to go right. Um, so don't get discouraged if you have uh, setbacks, but I always, I had a lot of setbacks and sort of able to come back and uh, get the opportunity to play. So. Very good. So, so, uh, you know, it's important to uh, not give up and to, to keep trying and, uh, and Go for to work hard. So I think yeah. those are some of the, the things you've shared with us today that are so important and important for anything, whether it's soccer or anything else that you're doing. Um, and we really appreciate you um, taking, you're welcome. The time, you're welcome. taking the time to talk to us today and um, know you're a busy guy. And uh, <laughs> I can tell from the fact that my phone was on fire that, um, <laughs> that the kids really enjoyed um, getting to ask yeah, I'm, questions. I'm glad. I'm, so I'm, glad I'm glad they enjoyed it. So thank you so much. And, um, and uh, we wish you a great uh, upcoming season and go thank Hammerheads. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Stefan. Bye, guys.